Big up all the people putting ones in the chat. Show some love for Leah Salmon, the Naturally You coach. And remember, get your questions ready because as soon as she finishes, we're going to have a live Q&A. Over to you, sis. Greetings, family. Thank you for joining us here um, with the Hidden Science Academy. Um, my good brother, Leon, and my sister, Vanika, doing amazing work and continuing to do so. And the work that they do is compounded by the support that all of you lot do. And we've got over 200 people um, looking at us right now, and I'm sure lots more will be watching the replay. And we appreciate the time that every single one of you give us. Um, and really and truly, you know, social media might be shadow banning and hiding posts and all that kind of stuff, but this is the process of us creating our own media um, and our own media platforms where we can freely share and we've got a safe space to be able to connect with each other and share the information that we know is important to each other. And more importantly, it's coming from our voices as well, because Black History Month is probably just as likely to be, if not already has been as whitewashed as most other spaces that we exist in. So it's actually good that we have a space that, you know, has to be so exclusive that only we are here so we can share freely um, and safely without prying eyes. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the hidden science of black women's health. And yeah, you'd be surprised the amount of, um, considering, how much of a contribution black people and black women have made to um, society, this society. It's shocking how little information is still available readily out there that gives us the practical tools that we need to be able to maintain our health. And we understand that the reason for this is because the system needs us to be reliant on them in order for um, their system to be maintained. So the more that we know about ourselves, and the more we know how to heal ourselves naturally, the less reliance we have on them, therefore they lose their power. So again, you utilizing the information that you hear in these talks and lectures and webinars um, allows you to take your health back into your own hands so that you do need to, you can be less reliant on them. Because again, a lot of people that come, a lot of sisters that come to me in brothers as well, in fact, um, they'll come to me because they have, they want to take their health back into their own hands, but they find the information out there is confusing. And as you've probably heard, when Leon breaks down a lot of information and the other expert speakers that you see on this panel, panel, the reason the information that's out there is confusing is because the information that they put out there about health maintenance was not designed with us in mind. It was created by the people who the society wanted to look after and that was their own people it wasn't us we're only i don't know three percent of the population or something like that um or ten percent of the population if you take into consideration all other people of color or all non-white people so they never we were never first in mind when it came to the information that they put out there um dr lila africa spoke about the fact that in America, the healthcare system, the procedures, the medication, the pharmaceuticals, the, um, the big operations and the smaller procedures, the literature, it was all based on um, the information gained from testing procedures and pharmaceuticals and all those kind of things on the people who were readily available at the time, which was mainly young white male college students. So when they're testing these procedures and the pharmaceuticals and they're working, we know it works on their chemistry, their body chemistry. That's why we don't do well. And I have clients come into me and they're on a shopping list of, you know, a big carrier bag shaking as they're walking with all the pharmaceutical drugs that they're taking and none of it's working. And that's because it was never designed for us, which is why when I made the shift in my career a few years ago, I wanted to focus on black women's health because I knew that the information out there was not for us. And I wanted to be able to learn as much as I could about the things that do work for us and not just the things that work for me, but the things that work for black women, which is why I work with so many black women and every black woman I work with gives me more information because we are not a monolith. We are not all exactly the same. And we, we do have different requirements, but the more sisters I work with, the more patterns I can see. And the, when I share information, I can share information from a space of, this is not just what I've seen work for me or my daughters or my sisters. This is what I've seen work for hundreds of black women. And I can also, um, because I've worked with, a lot of black women, I can also have a variety of different things that, okay, we try this, if this doesn't work, 
I've also seen this work, this works 80% of the time, this works 70% of the time. Um, so you have an arsenal and the things that I'm recommending are natural things. And we, as we know, um, when you come to buy supplements, you might buy vitamin D or you might buy vitamin C and it's just the vitamin D or the vitamin C. But when you're recommending something like CMOS and I might recommend CMOS to someone, to a sister for iron, but we know CMOS has got like a hundred other nutrients in it. So even if it's not gonna um, alleviate your specific situation, you're still adding more nourishing foods to your body. And I'm also of the opinion that the body has a natural intelligence, women's bodies, men's bodies, our bodies has a natural intelligence. And just like a car, when you put the right fuel in a car and you put some oil in and you put some you know, water in, you put a few things in the car and then the car has the, the intelligence, it's designed to run itself. You don't need to then go in and move the motor and you know spark up the alternator and move the gears because it does it all for you when you put the right fuel in and a lot of us are just malnourished we might be eating three meals a day we might be in you know we're not on the bread line and we've got money to buy food but a lot of the food we're eating is empty calories and it's not actually nourishing your body and your body is again designed to grow heal and repair itself once it's got the right level of nutrients in it and again you know looking at things holistically, even if we are eating well, if our mindset is not in a good place, if we're sitting down all day, if we're not getting enough sunshine, if we are, um, if we are experiencing existential angst, we, we, we don't know our place in the world. We feel like, you know, we're in a job or in a relationship or in a course or in a, a way of life and a way of living that is not best for us and we feel that there's something more that we should be doing all of those things have got an impact on your health which is why when I focus when I work with clients I'm not just focusing on their food I'm focusing on their mindset and their lifestyle as well which is why I say that when I work with clients I'm helping them to eat for health because I don't need to encourage anyone to eat for happiness or for taste you guys are pretty good at that we're all very good at eating for taste we're all very good at eating for convenience as well um, but a lot of us aren't very sure when it comes to eating for health because again if you eat for health based on the food pyramids that are out there they will tell you that it's you know we need to be eating whole grains on a daily basis and dairy and red meat and as a lot of us know by now if you've followed the hidden science academy um, or even if you've just followed any kind of black health practitioners those foods do not work for us if i have a caucasian client come in i will be i will recommend if they want to, and they don't have symptoms from it, that they eat cream, go and get some raw dairy cream, organic raw dairy cream. And you can probably benefit from the nutrients that are in that a few times a week. And I have worked with Caucasian clients and it does work for them. But when I've got my people, we know that that's not gonna, that's not gonna be the one, that's not gonna work. Um, so as we go on, so a bit about me, I'm a homeschooling mother of six children and one angel boy. The angel boy is the second child that we had who passed on from being premature. So our first two children were born prematurely um, and our first daughter was born at seven and a half months and she's now 16. She lived in the hospital for six weeks. Our second child was born at five and a half months. So he lived in the hospital until he was eight months old and then made his transition to the ancestors. Um, and after a number of years, getting through the process of of that that's why i wanted to focus a lot more on black women's health especially womb health and pregnancy health because i had a terrible time with my menstrual cycle when i was um, a teenager um, i had undiagnosed an anemia like i would be on the bus going to school and i'd be so lightheaded i would think i was about to pass out on the bus and that happened numerous times never knew what it was it was only when i started studying about health i realized i was severely iron deficient then i started speaking to other sisters who experienced the same thing and again this information just is not out there <laughs> for us this stuff should be getting taught in schools and it absolutely isn't being taught in schools so that's when my angel boy comes into it I'm also a best-selling author of six books. Um, I'm a speaker, nutritionist, life coach, live blood analyst. Um, I run a Birmingham-based clinic where I do my live blood analysis and an online health store. And again, my focus is on uh, menstrual womb, pregnancy health, premature birth prevention, and personal development. But I'm a, I am happy to work with anyone and any um, health condition that they may have. 
So today we're going to be looking at the five keys to black women's health, superfoods to always have in your kitchen, three habits that can damage your health, um, and three habits that can restore your health. This is actually a point that I added because I didn't want to leave it on a downer with just telling you about three habits that could damage your health. I wanted to um, also share with you three habits that you can use to restore your health as well if you feel that it has been damaged. Um, so the five keys to black women's health are hydration, digestive health, movement, hormonal health. And the fifth one, I'm going to ask you guys in the chat when we get there to see if you can guess what the fifth one is. So um, I'm going to be running through these because there's going to be information. There's going to be time for us to ask questions at the end. Um, so let me just... Um, Right. So hydration. Again, I'm going to be whizzing through this because most of us already know if we're drinking enough water or not. But um, the reasons why hydration is important and the reason. So with these keys, these are the things that if we can optimize them um, and if we can introduce um, practices in our life that support them, we can have a we can experience vibrant health to a degree, um, we can experience the, uh, the highest level of health that we can possibly um, experience. And again, you know, no one lives in a vacuum. We can't block ourselves off from everything else that's happening in the world and all the other things that we can be subjected to. But once we strengthen these areas of our life, we, could, we are in a better place, we're in a stronger place to be able to deal with the other things that might come in. So again, when I have clients come in and they're like, you know, I never want to eat any hybrid food ever. I'm never eating seeded, seedless grapes or everything has to be organic and the water always has to have shungai in it and all these kind of things. I'm like, I, I, I do understand that, but we can get to the point in our life and health where if we're not doing it in a sustainable way, we can end up questioning and scrutinizing everything that we eat, drink, look at, um, you know, the bed we sleep on. Is there toxins coming up from the laminate flooring we're in? Is there toxins coming from the paint on the wall? We can't get in rain because rain's got acid in it. We'll get to the point where we'll just be standing still and not moving because <laughs> it's the safest thing we can possibly do. And no one wants that. You want to enjoy your life. And our body, again, is made to heal, grow and repair itself. So we have a liver that top detoxifies us we have skin which is our biggest organ of detoxification um, and again water is one of the things that if we have enough of it it can help our body to metabolize and get rid of the toxins that we may take in so that we we can be as careful as possible but that 10 percent of our environment that we can't control that's where you strengthen your body so that you can you, you have that prophylactic um, defense mechanism in place for it. So hydration is essential for digestion. Um, if you're not drinking enough water, <clears throat> then your body's not gonna be able to um, process and get the nutrients out of your food. Your body uses roughly two liters of water a day to digest your food, depending on how your, you know, your size and your weight. If you're not replacing, um, cause some people don't, some people, aren't they know they're meant to drink two liters of water but they're not quite sure what the reason for it is so it's never really a priority for them so if you're not drinking two liters of fresh water then your body is going to be forced to either number one pull water from other places like your skin your scalp your joints your brain um, in order to continue that process of digestion to get the nutrients out of your food to fuel you or it will just inhibit different parts of your digestive process. So you won't be passing a stool every day. And this, this comes to a shock as a shock to a lot of clients that I work with. You should be passing a stool every single day. Every, every other day is not enough. Not passing a stool because your stool smells bad is a reason why you need to be passing it every day. It smells bad because it's been sitting there putrefying in your system, sis, and it needs to come out. It cannot be in there. Your bowel was only designed to hold on to food for a maximum of 12 hours. So when you're sitting on three meals a day for three days, that's a lot of food to be holding on to. And it's no wonder that when you are hydrated and you are passing stools every day and your digestive system is working, that it improves your skin and hair health. Because if you're 
dehydrated, again, your body is pulling water from your skin, from your hair, and they are going to look weaker. Your, your hair is going to look duller. Your scalp is going to be drier. There's going to be more information in where the, in the actual follicles of your hair, um, your skin is going to look drier. You're going to look paler. It's going to, you're going to be more prone to spots. All of those kind of things are going to be the case when you're not well enough hydrated. Hydration also helps to stabilize your cholesterol and your blood pressure as well. Because again, your blood is, when I'm looking at um, people's blood doing live blood analysis, I can see when they're dehydrated. And a lot of people who are severely dehydrated, there is a correlation that I have seen in slides um, and looking at people's blood where people who are severely dehydrated are more likely to have high blood pressure. People who have been told they've been diagnosed with cholesterol, high cholesterol levels, they are likely to be the ones who are telling me that they drink one cup of water and maybe seven to eight cups of juice or coffee or Ribena and all of these other things. Now you may have heard um, Leon speak about and other um, experts speak about structured water. And, and the, the challenge with that is when people hear that the juice that comes out of fruits and vegetables is a structured water, what my clients have said to me is, yeah, that's why I drink a bottle of juice in, instead of water so I can get in the structured water. I said, do you realize that when they're talking about structured water, they're not talking about Tesco's own brand from concentrate orange juice sitting on a plastic, splitting in a plastic bottle on the, you realize that's not what structured water is. So family, if you're thinking about structured water being fruit juice, it is only the water that you find within the fruits and vegetables that you can get out by juicing those fruits and vegetables in front of you. It is not the fruit juice you see sitting on the shelves. It's not an innocent smoothie. It's not, it's not any of those things. The structured water you can get that can make up some of that two liters has to come from actual fruits and vegetables. And there are people who don't actually drink water and they only get water from fruits and vegetables. Um, and when you get to a level of health where your body can do that, that's absolutely gonna be fine for you. Now, some people find it difficult to drink enough water. So something that I would recommend is that you create a water schedule for yourself. So one that I, um, again, recommend to a lot of my clients is that to get two liters in a day, you aim to have 500 mils as soon as you wake up and then 500 mils, 10 minutes before your breakfast, lunch, and dinner so that you're spreading the water intake throughout the day and you're not drinking too close to bedtime. Um, and it's an easy number to remember. You're only drinking four times a day because some people are like, you know, I drink a bit every hour and then I forget for a couple of hours and all that's a bit long, four times a day. Let me just box down 500 mils and we're cool. And some people are like, oh, there's no way I can drink 500 mils. I want you to look at it like this. When you brush your teeth for two minutes, you just stand there. You're not trying to do 101 other things. You stand there for two minutes and you do the whole process of brushing your teeth. Consider drinking these 500 mils four times a day, just like that. Just stand there and sip it until you've got through 500 mils. The warmer the water is, the easier it's gonna be for you to take it in. Um, if you can gulp it down, gulp it down. If you can take it in, in if it takes you two minutes to, to drink it, do that. You don't want to get your tummy queasy. And the more you do it, the easier it's going to become for that to be a case. The other thing you can do is put a pinch of salt or a squeeze of lemon or lime, preferably, into your water. If you feel that you're drinking a lot and you're peeing all the time, the salt helps your cells to hold on to the water more efficiently instead of it feeling like it's just all going through you. And the lemon does the same. If you actually scrub your lemon or lime skins really well, you can put half or a quarter of a lime into your water bottle and then you'll be benefiting from the essential oils that are very antiparasitic and antiviral and antibacterial um, that come out of the skin of those citrus fruit as well. You can also put a reminder on your phone to remind you to drink. And there are also a lot of apps that you can download for free that will you know, put up a little notification because um, you know how we love notifications um, that will remind you to drink as well so that you're making sure you're getting it in because that is the cheapest, easiest thing that you can ever do to protect your health. And if you want to learn more about water, there's a brilliant book called Your Body's Many Cries for Water by Dr. Batman Gilhedi. And he lists about 42, 52 um, systems in your body that, are suff that suffer through dehydration. So for example, he did um, an experiment with people who had high cholesterol levels and he got them to all drink two glasses of water 10 minutes before they, they ate. And within a number of weeks, I think it was, a lot of their um, cholesterol, the vast majority of them, in fact, their cholesterol levels had stabilized. The other thing that's a key to digestive health for women, um, 
for black women is our digestive health. So if our, if we're, you're not, there is this famous saying that you are what you eat, but you're not what you eat, you are what you digest. And with all of the processes that black women and our bodies have to go through, we need as much energy as possible. We can't afford to um, be eating food that's not nourishing us and that's not actually giving us nutrients. So if you think about digestion as the process of breaking the raw materials that we take in down, getting the nutrients from those raw materials and then delivering those nutrients to the tissues in our body so that those tissues can run efficiently. If you, if any of, if anyone's a mother out there or a parent out there and you remember ever changing your baby's nappy before they had teeth and they might have got their hands on someone's food and you open the nappy and you see a whole sweet corn kernel in there. The baby might have grabbed some someone's food, stuffed it in their mouth. Because they have no teeth, they weren't able to start that process of digestion by breaking that food down. And it went all the way down into their nappy, went through the whole digestive tract without an iota of nutrients actually getting into their body. It came in and went straight out. Um, and a lot of us are not getting the nutrients from our food in the same way that baby didn't get nutrients from it's that sweet corn. And that can be for a number of reasons because your digestive system is actually quite complex. It starts with your mouth. If you're not chewing your food properly, if then the, the digestive enzymes that are actually found in your um, saliva they can't actually start the process of breaking down the food so that when it gets down into the stomach, it's only partially broken down so the stomach can't do its work. And then when more digestive enzymes get squirted on it in the small intestine, they don't have a surface to break the food down because the skin is still on a lot of the foods. And then again, we're just we're just passing out food. We're wasting our money because we're not breaking our food down properly. But when you are digesting your food properly, it means that you're able to access the nutrients and therefore the energy that is in a lot of the foods that we're eating. Um, because there's no point in spending hundreds of pounds on organic food and biodynamic food and, you know, heirloom seeds and all these kind of things. And it's coming out whole, like it's that you're wasting your money. Um, so, but when you are buying good quality foods, and you can get the nutrients out of it, then that's when you can, that's why when, there's a lot of people who will say that, you know, healthy eating doesn't work for them because they're not feeling the benefit of it. And that's because there is this initial step that means that you buy the healthy food and you're eating the healthy food, but you also need to be able to digest it to get the nutrients out of it. And again, when you're getting the nutrients out of your food, again, you're going to see it in your skin and in your hair. Um, and again, I've mentioned skin and hair a lot because for, for sisters, that is an easy way for us to, because we spend a lot of time on our skin and our hair, that's sometimes the warning signal for a lot of us that something is not going well. A lot of sisters will come to me again because they, they begin to um, see that their hair is falling out or their skin is not looking so good and it look, used to look a lot better before. They're always tired. And then again, because we have menstrual cycles, a lot of us are, even if you've gone past the menstrual cycle and you've gone through menopause, if you had some level of anemia while you were uh, menstrual for those years and years that you were menstrual and you didn't do anything to rectify that deficiency, that deficiency can follow you for years after you've even um, had a cycle. Um, and again, you can start seeing that in your hair. And again, when you've gone through the change and your body's not producing the estrogen that it was before, that was that was protecting your body in a lot of ways. It was keeping your bones strong. It was keeping your skin looking good. It was keeping your hair looking good. Then you're going to see the impact of that even more. And when you are older as well, when we get on in years, our body doesn't produce as much digestive enzyme as it did when we were younger. So it get, that's why when people get older, they're like, I can't eat white potatoes anymore. I can't eat anything with soya. I can't eat tomatoes. Eggs go right through me. But the more you protect and look after your digestive system um, while, you know, before those changes happen, the more likely it is that you're not going to suffer those things when you um, get later on in life. And a lot of those challenges are not challenges that our ancestors ever faced, no matter what age they were, their digestive system always worked impeccably. Um, it's a current, it's a modern day phenomenon, and it's because of the low levels of nutrients that are in our food and the high level of processed food that's passing itself off as 
um, actual food that we are eating now. Having a good digestion also boosts your immunity because roughly 70 to 80 percent of your immune system is in your digestive tract in the form of the friendly bacteria or the probiotics that you have there. And you also want to make sure that you're getting in enough food to feed those probiotics, to feed those friendly bacteria. And those are called prebiotics. So prebiotics are the insoluble fibers that we take in that our body can't really break down and do much with, but it does provide a fuel source and a food source for the friendly bacteria. So those are things like onions and garlic, artichoke, Jerusalem artichokes in particular, um, things like um, rice is a good um, food. And then when you buy like supplements and all those kind of things, you'll see inulin. And that's a really good prebiotic as well. The skins of a lot of fruits and vegetables, especially things like apple skins are a really good source of the, the food that feeds the friendly bacteria. Um, and the friendly bacteria make sure <clears throat> that they protect your body, just like the white blood cells do it in your blood. The friendly bacteria allow, are able to keep the unfriendly bacteria in check so that they don't overgrow and we don't end up with overgrowth. And especially for black women, things like thrush, candida, all of those kind of things are linked to low levels of friendly bacteria and, and a misfiring digestive tract. When you have an imbalance in your friendly bacteria, it's called dysbiosis. You can look up that term dysbiosis and simply by taking a probiotic, you can address that. So some of the things that you can do to support your digestion is to, um, this is an old Chinese saying, chew your drinks and drink your food, which means make sure you're chewing your food so much that your solids become liquid and it's like you're drinking it. And then you're even chew masticating or chewing the liquids that come into your mouth. Because anytime you do that motion of chewing it stimulates your body to your mouth to produce more saliva so anything that you're taking in even if it's a smoothie or a drink or a juice there's more digestive enzyme in your saliva there to break it all down and going back to step one if you're dehydrated you're not going to have enough water to produce high enough levels of saliva um, to carry that initial process out in the first place you can definitely start taking digestive enzymes probiotics and having one raw meal a day, all of those things will help to add more um, digestive um, fire to your system. Because sometimes our digestive system just needs a wake up. So you can take digestive enzymes just for three, three months or so just to wake up your digestive tract. One of the things that, well, food sources of digestive enzymes, for example, is like the core, the hard bit of pineapples. That's got loads of digestive enzymes in it. So the papaya seeds, things like celery, ginger, all of those things are really good at firing and waking up the digestive system. There's something called a ginger pickle that you can make where you get raw ginger and you grate it, you saturate it with lime juice, and then you let it sit in the fridge overnight and that will pickle it instantly. And then you just take a pinch of it and chew it before each meal. And that stimulates your body's digestive processes so that the what you are about to put in your mouth after that has is going to be entering a stomach with loads of digestive enzymes and um, stomach acid there to break it down really efficiently. That's why if you've ever eaten like sushi or in a Japanese restaurant, they give you these little slithers of ginger and they tell you to eat it first. That's exactly what it is. It's a ginger pickle. The other thing that's really useful is personalized diet planning, which is one of the processes that I do with my clients, where we can actually find out the exact balance of nutrients that works best for your body, because there is no one size fits all diet that does work for anyone, for everyone. Um, there are definitely suggestions that do cross the board, but some people are just not eating for their, their metabolic type or their biochemic medical, med, uh, their biochemic um, metabolism. So that's one of the processes that I do. And you can find out more about that at the naturally forward slash coaching. Um, the other thing is movement. Movement is cleansing. Our body, we were never designed to sit down every day. That's why they say sitting is the new smoking. Traditionally, we would have been moving around, um, whether it was, you know, the men going out doing kind of more physical work or the women just... Any mother knows mothers move around a lot. We don't get to sit down all day to do anything. Um, and there wasn't as many modern conveniences as they were called um, ancestrally. So there were a lot more things that we needed to be physical in doing, washing clothes, carrying pots, holding our babies. There's a lot of cultures, cultural societies, even up until now, that constantly hold their babies and practice baby carrying until the child is like three. I definitely carried the last, our last two or three children 
until they were at least two, if not three. I like there's there's footage and pictures of me at events doing talks on stage with my baby on my back. Um, and that's and the longer you hold your baby on your back, in fact, it actually creates a greater sense of security in that child because they never have to wonder, you know, where security is because they always they spend a lot of time in their formative initial years being very close to a parent, whether it's a mother or a father. And that's a really good way for fathers to bond with their children as well is by baby carrying, because again, mothers are a lot more maternal. So we will naturally go to our children a lot more. Um, but fathers getting into the habit of holding their babies, that's a good way for them to um, bond with their children as well. But yeah, when you're moving around a lot, it helps your circulation. And a lot of our sisters are suffering with things like fibroids and fibroids is definitely seen as a circulatory challenge. And there are sisters who have said that they have alleviated the symptoms of their fibroids simply by doing things like hula hooping on a daily basis and skipping and yoga and, you know, the kind of African dancing, which has been over-sexualized now, but the, the dance movement of twerking, what they call twerking now, where a woman rotates her hips, that is a very um, beneficial dance because it creates a lot of um, circulation and movement in that uterus kind of hip area that brings a lot of nutrients and um, blood flow to that area to reduce any stagnation that can lead to the blockages and the stagnation of the energy, not even just the, the blood flow, the, the stagnation of the energy in that area. And therefore it reduces the likelihood of you developing a lot of womb health challenges. The more you exercise, the more that it actually helps your body to absorb the nutrients from your food and exercise and movement helps to reduce some of the conditions that affect black women disproportionately, like high blood pressure, diabetes and breast and ovarian cancer. And with breast and ovarian cancer, black women don't actually have higher levels or a higher chance of developing it. But when we do get it, it's more likely to be fatal or the more severe forms of those cancers. So we're not more likely to get it, but when we do get it, we suffer more with it. But movement and exercise on a regular basis reduces our risk of developing those things. So some things that you can get in the habit of doing is stretching on a daily basis, standing when you're using screens as opposed to sitting down all the time. So one of the things I got in and, and walking and talking is so one of the things I got into the habit of doing is if I was ever taking a phone call or doing coaching calls, apart from when I Zoom came into our lives, I would normally walk around while I was on the phone. So, you know, I'd just be walking around in a circle in my front room, but <laughs> it still meant that I was able to walk around. Um, getting out of breath and sweating three times a week. I mentioned this a lot because in this particular climate that we're in now, we need to make sure that we are cleansing our respiratory tract and getting out of breath is one of the ways that we can do that. And if you were to ask yourself, apart from going to the gym and you know, if you're one of those people that have gym membership, but don't quite get there, um, there's unfortunately a fair amount of us that do not get out of breath on a daily basis. And a lot of us are shallow breathing as well. So when we're sitting in front of devices, we're hunched over. So we're reducing the volume of our, the you know capacity of our lungs. We're hunched over, we're like this, we're in front of a screen and we are shallow breathing. There's no deep breathing going on at all until you start talking about like, and since I've started speaking about deep breathing, I'm sure some people have started deep breathing. I'm sure when I started talking about water, a couple of people grabbed the bottle and started sipping on it. Um, and again, that's why these events are good because it just reminds you of those simple things that are very important to our health. But getting out of breath and sweating three times a week is, is something that you can do that's so important because when you sweat, again, you're detoxifying your body through your skin. When you're out getting out of breath, you're deep breathing, you're fully oxygenating your body and your blood, and you're detoxifying your respiratory system. Now, women are, we have a lot of functions in our body that are that are focused on our hormonal health. Um, and the the, the better our hormonal health is, the less likely it is that we will develop a lot of the challenges that we are subjected to right now. And our hormonal health is um, dealt with by some organs called the endocrine system, which include our adrenal glands, our brain. In men, it's testes. Um, women, it's our ovaries, our thyroid, the pituitary gland, the thymus, and the pancreas. And our hormonal health has a direct impact on our skin and hair. In fact, I did a whole... Um, 
a whole two hour uh, webinar with a workbook specifically talking about how your period affects your um, skin and hair health because because of the hormonal changes that happen during our cycle, when our body is producing more estrogen or more progesterone or more testosterone, it will affect the amount of sebum that's being produced on our hair and on our skin. Um, so I speak a lot about how you can make sure that if you are getting excessively oily skin or excessively dry skin or excessively oily hair or dry hair um, and all the other challenges that come with that, how you can balance it all out. Um, it definitely affects our weight, even insofar as the, you know, the insulin production because one of the challenges that faces black women more is things like diabetes where your your body's ability to manage blood sugar and insulin and the pancreas have a lot to do with that obviously is impaired some of us are born with it some people develop it because of you know lifestyle um but whatever it is it can definitely negatively affect our weight now again when it comes to weight don't focus on bmi so much because you know and even sometimes when they ask you to measure different parts of your body, because black women, we have much more, we can have more of a voluptuous figure. Um, so the distribution of fat and muscle on our bodies is going to be different than it is on the, st the standards that those charts were made from. And I'm so when I'm talking about weight, I'm not talking about black women having larger hips and larger buttocks and sometimes larger breasts as well. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about what we definitely know is the unhealthy levels of fat that we can hold in the areas that are also not healthy. Um, when you don't have good hormonal health, it will affect your adrenal gland and therefore it will have an impact on your energy. It will affect your sleep. Um, and there's so much research being done right now about the importance of sleep. There's actually a, a chemical toxin that builds up in your brain the whole time that you're awake. And the only time that your body degrades it or gets rid of it is when you're sleeping. So when you're not getting enough sleep, this toxin continues to build up in your brain to unhealthy levels, which is why lack of sleep is now actually being linked to things like Parkinson's disease and dementia in later life. And sisters, you know, we are very, um, especially mothers, you know, we're used to kind of getting up at every slightest noise that our child makes in the middle of the night. And when we say we're going to go to bed now, it takes us 35 minutes to do it because we, I'm going to bed, I'm getting up, I'm going to bed. If a guy says that, he's really just getting up and going to bed. Most he's going to do is brush his teeth and go and pee. If a sister says she's going to sleep, yeah, I'm getting up to go to sleep now. Then she'll tidy the front room and then tidy the kitchen, there's some dishes in the sink, she'll do the dishes. And then she'll realize there's a spillage on the floor. So she'll sort that out. She makes sure everyone's got their packed lunch and food for tomorrow. Then she'll go upstairs and then she'll brush her teeth and pee and then oh the toilet's a bit dirty let me sort that out the sink ain't clean let me sort that out there's some laundry on the floor and let me put a load of laundry in let me fold a load fold a load of laundry so everyone's got their clothes for tomorrow then you get into your bedroom and then you've got to put some order into the you know your your dressing table and then get your clothes out and then all these times 45 and then you get into bed and then you pick up your phone to turn on your alarm and then you get caught on instagram and then you get caught on pinterest and then a notification pops up and then you spend 30 minutes on the phone and then you go to sleep that is sisters. Sisters, tell me if that ain't true. Tell me if we don't do that. We don't take 35 minutes to get into bed when we say we're going to go to sleep. Um, and then your husband wakes up all fresh as a daisy, wondering why you wake up a bit miserable every morning. Um, so yeah, sleep is super important and we do need to, we're not Margaret Thatcher. We don't need to blink in. I remember everyone used to say she was the iron lady because she lived on four hours sleep that's some foolishness okay we're not going to sleep when we're dead we're going to sleep now so we can enjoy the life that we live while we are here um on top of the fact that our ancestors used to sleep in the cycles of the sun so we didn't have any lights and electricity to keep us up that much later than when the sun went down um and those patterns kept us in sync with nature. And now we've got all these lights and devices. We've completely thrown off that cycle, that natural circadian rhythm that Leon's spoken about so many times. And when that happens, all of those things can affect our fertility as well and have an impact on our periods and peri peri our perimenopausal time, which is the roughly 10 years before you go through the menopause and then your actual menopause. The hormones affect all of those things. And one of the most important organs that you need to look at to protect your hormonal health is your liver because your liver is the organ that detoxifies a lot of things in your body it's got over 100 functions but again it's the organ that when you have excess levels of hormone in your body your liver is the is the organ that 
gets rid of it, it degrades it in your body. And what is often the case is it's normally not that our body is producing too much hormone, it's that we're taking in uh, xenoestrogens or things that are mimicking hormones in our body, um, or things like the endocrine disrupting chemicals that um, Sal Baxter speaks a lot about, the sister from root to tip. If you haven't seen the hidden science of black hair where she speaks, then definitely go ahead and check that out. She speaks a lot about the hormones we take in. Um, all of those things our liver then has to deal with. So it's normally not that our body's producing too much hormone. Sometimes it definitely is, but sometimes it's just that the natural level of hormone we are producing gets clogged up in an already clogged up liver. And a lot of us don't do liver cleanses and flushes. But again, I know that the Hidden Science Academy did a liver, a group liver cleanse and flush with everyone um, the other day, which is brilliant, especially for women's health. Because when we are holding on to too many hormones, especially estrogen, that can lead to the development uh, or the, the survival of things like fibroids and polyps and um, PCOS and all these types of endometriosis, all of those kind of things, and definitely different forms of cancer as well. Oh, I just gave it away. Okay, I was going to get everyone to guess <laughs> what the fifth step is, the fifth key. Okay, so- They never it saw away. it, they never saw it. <laughs> they never saw it, oh, they've seen it now. <laughs> okay, so the fifth key to happiness, to, to Black women's health is happiness. Because again, Black women are so, we can be so loving and giving. And even if we don't have children, we're maternal, we're looking after everybody else's health and happiness. And we very rarely make sure we are tending to and enhancing and nourishing our own happiness. It's been clinically and scientifically proven that people who are happier have reduced levels of stress, have increased immunity. Happiness helps protect your heart health. It can help with pain management. And some of the things that you can do to support your own happiness is to treat yourself weekly, doing even small acts of kindness. We talk about small acts of kindness that we do to everybody else, but we also need to make sure we're pouring back into ourselves and we're filling ourselves back up and doing something nice to yourself. Like I did a, a talk for Burbank University um, the other day and it was on self-care and self-advocacy. And the question, some of the people were asking, you know, what if I feel guilty? What do I do about the feelings of guilt that I experience when I do spend time on myself? And again, black women, we're so used to looking after everyone else. If we take five minutes for ourselves, we can have these feelings of guilt. And then when we go back to our children, we want to overcompensate. Or if we have to spend longer time at work or we're not seeing our children so much, we want to overcompensate and buy them more things and do the most when we're with them because of this feeling of it's not okay for me to give myself time. And it, for some women, it can take for them to get older and for them to their children to grow up and them to you know move out and live their own lives before they give themselves that time and space and give themselves permission to love on themselves. Um, but I actively encourage sisters to do that no matter what stage you're in, whether you have children, no matter how many you have, whether they've moved out. And again, because some mums, when their children move out, it feels like they've just they're still doing that much work. I know mothers who go to their children's houses who are 30 and cook and clean, and they have to make a whole massive banquet of food every Sunday because the whole family's coming over and no one cooks on a Sunday because they're going to wait on mum to do it. And all of that is nice and cool. As long as you are balancing that out by nourishing and giving back to yourself because you can't feed anyone from an empty cup and we will keep on giving and never replenish that for and you may have you may be blessed to have a good partner or good people around you who ensure that you do give yourself time and they pour back into you but we don't always have that opportunity so you need to and again the helping hand you need is at the end of your own arm so you need to prioritize yourself because again the way you treat yourself we teach the world how to treat us by people seeing how we treat ourselves. So when people see you treating yourself and pouring into yourself and looking after yourself, that you've set that standard and the world knows that they need to meet that standard. And those around you who don't meet that standard, you now know that those are people that shouldn't be in your life. Now, Mary Kondo detox your life. I've spoken about this a few times. I'm not sure if I've spoken about it in, to the Hidden Science family. But there's this little, um, I think she's Chinese, a little Chinese lady called Mary Kondo. She's got a whole series on Netflix or something. And she focuses on like detoxing and tidying up and creating order in your home and getting rid of clutter and stuff like that. And one of the things that she practices 
is or one of the things that she recommends is that if you've got like a, a drawer or a cupboard or a, a box that's got loads of stuff in it and you need to work out what you need to keep and what you don't she says to pick up something from that drawer or cupboard or whatever it is and hold it and ask yourself does this bring me joy and if it brings you joy you keep it if you get no feeling or it doesn't bring you joy, you get rid of it. And that's the process that you do to determine what you keep in your life and what you get rid of. And you can marry detox, marry condo detox your whole life because there might be not just things in your life, but people in your life or experiences or jobs or work or chores that don't bring you joy. And we understand there's the necessary evils of cleaning and all those kind of things. And some of them you do have to do yourself, but there might be some things that you can delegate or you can pay other people to do, or you, you might just be doing things that do not need to be done. Um, and so I would definitely recommend to bring yourself happiness is to marry condo detox your life, do an inventory of your life and the things that don't bring you joy and that don't have to be there, you can let go of them. The other thing that you can do is practice mirror love, mirror loving yourself. And that's where you stand in front of a mirror and it might be a bit uncomfortable to do this the first few times, but you'll get used to it. Just give yourself some time and say to yourself on a daily basis, these three things, I am proud of you for, and find anything you've done that you're proud of yourself for. I forgive you for, Find anything that you've done that you maybe didn't plan on do or you know you shouldn't have done, but you did it anyway and forgive yourself for it. And today I am committed to, and then tell yourself something you're committed to doing to, for yourself today that is beneficial to you. So the five keys to black women's health are hydration, hormonal health, movement, digestive health, and happiness. Now, 10 of the superfoods that you should always have in your kitchen is clean water. And I know this sounds silly because we're in the modern world. Um, and I don't mean it's crystal clear when it comes out of the tap. I mean that you have some method of making sure that the water that comes out of your tap or even the bottled water that you buy in the plastic bottles somehow gets cleaned because water is super important, which we've spoken about already. Um, but not all of us are making sure we're cleaning our water. Some people are still cooking and eating and you know drinking uh, tap water. So whether it's a simple Brita water filter or a water distiller or the Berkey filters, no matter how fancy it needs to get, something that you can use to clean your water, even if that means you're just boiling water and then putting shungite in it, doing something to clean the water so that all this water that I'm telling you to drink, you're getting it from a clean source. The other thing I would definitely recommend again for sisters is sea moss. It's got so many of the nutrients that our body can very easily get depleted from. And again, when you get later on in life and your body's not producing as much estrogen, then it can cause problems with your bones not being as strong and your joints not being as supportive, which is why women, when they've gone through the change, we're more likely to get things like osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, which again is another reason why exercise is so important because you know that weight bearing exercise, body weight exercising, putting pressure on your muscles and your bones strengthens them but you also want to make sure you're feeding them and nourishing them throughout your whole life so that you don't end up with weaker bones when you're when you do get older also when your sisters who are pregnant we want to definitely make sure we're getting in enough nutrients because when you're growing that whole baby baby is pulling nutrients from you and baby is the priority so if you've had one two three four children and you've never really given yourself the, the opportunity to nourish and replenish those nutrients you can be and again I swear to goodness I know sisters who have still got deficiency and their child is 10 years old because they never took the time to replenish themselves fully and they have just been functioning at this suboptimal nutritional level pretty much malnourished for decades. Um, so CMOS is something that you can take on a regular basis to add those nutrients back to your body or other blue green algae, things like chlorella, um, spirulina, the blue spirulina is a, is a new fancy one that you can use as well. Um, apple cider vinegar is another superfood that's really beneficial, again, for the digestion, which I spoke about, making sure that our digestive system is on point. It's something that some people feel you can use on your hair. Um, you can use it to get rid of fungi and bacteria and all those types of things on your skin. If you get skin eruptions, it's beneficial for that. Turmeric is also beneficial. I love turmeric. I talk about turmeric all the time. I put turmeric in everything. Um, it's anti-inflammatory. Sisters who have got um, painful periods, it's really good at reducing pain and inflammation. It's one of the best anti-inflammatories, in fact. And our body doesn't actually absorb it as efficiently um, without other nutrients. So adding just a tiny amount of 
good quality black pepper ha helps your body to absorb your turmeric more efficiently. Um, chia seeds, because a lot of sisters are deficient in healthy fats. So making sure we've got enough chia, chia seeds is a good uh, vegan source of healthy fats. The word chia actually means strong because in ancient Peruvian cultures, that's what everybody would take and use to keep themselves strong because not only does it have healthy fat, but it's got loads of minerals in it, especially calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and manganese. Um, again, and those are all very beneficial for your bones. Um, probiotics, again, just to make sure that your, your digestive system and your immune system are on point. So you can buy liquid probiotics, the capsules, you can make your own water kefir, you can make your own sauerkraut, and all of those things have got probiotics in them, friendly bacteria that can benefit um, your bodies. Coconut oil and olive oil, um, these are things that you can use to, um, to moisturize your skin moisturize your hair, use them to brush your teeth. You can do coconut oil pulling where you take a tablespoon of coconut oil and you swish it around in your mouth for 15 minutes. And that helps to whiten your teeth. It helps pull bacteria from between your teeth, helps freshen your breath um, and all those wonderful things as well. You can definitely cook with it. It's a healthy uh, form of fat, even though it's a saturated fat because that was a misconception that came about in the 70s that saturated fat was not good for you. But there's now a whole book written about the benefits of coconut oil called the coconut oil miracle. And there's another book called the palm oil miracle because they only just realized about 10 years ago that tropical fats were amazing, even though we knew that for ages. Um, dark green leafy vegetables, because you want to make sure, again, sisters, you want to make sure you're getting in as much chlorophyll as possible because chlorophyll is very cleansing to our bodies so that we can detoxify um, our bodies efficiently from all the toxins that we're taking in. The dark green leafy vegetables also have good amounts of iron and calcium. Sisters who are pregnant or want to have children, things like kale have got good amounts of vitamin K in them, which is that vitamin that they want to always inject our babies with as soon as our babies are born. Um, chocolate. Now, ladies, I am not talking about galaxy or Cadbury's darlings. I'm talking about proper cocoa. You know, the cocoa ball you buy from the West Indian food shop there and you grate it and you boil it up. That's the chocolate I'm talking about. Because when sisters used to have any kind of menstrual challenges around their cycle or just before they're about to go on their cycle, cocoa tea is what we used to have back home. We used to grate that chocolate down and we used to drink it because it's full of magnesium and calcium. It's calming, it's nourishing. It's got lower levels of caffeine in it than the other sources. And the caffeine that is found in the natural cocoa ball chocolates um, is not the same grade of caffeine that's found in caffeinated drinks and coffee and all those kind of things. But it's so nutrient rich. Um, and it's definitely one of the things that we use a lot in this house. We have chocolate smoothies very often. Um, in fact, one of our morning smoothies is coconut milk, chocolate powder, chia seeds, soaked chia seeds, sea moss, turmeric and black pepper, mixed spice, banana or plantain, all blended up. Um, that's something that we all have very regularly. Also having chocolate makes you feel like you're doing something indulgent. Um, it makes you feel better. It does definitely have a beneficial effect on our mental and emotional. Um, so indulging in healthy chocolate and healthier forms of chocolate is very beneficial. So even if you buy like the green and black pure chocolate powder and you mix that with like mashed avocado, you blend that with mashed avocado and honey, you can make yourself like a nice chocolate pudding. With that, you can mix chocolate powder with coconut oil again and honey or coconut sugar and mix that into like a sauce and then put that into the compartments of an ice cube tray and then put that in the freezer for a little while and then you'll pop out little chunks of chocolate that you can indulge yourself with. Um, so you can still feel like you're doing something special and indulgent with yourself while benefiting your health as well. Um, and I've squeezed three into one here because there's a whole host of amazing herbs that are beneficial for sisters. And the three that I recommend you always have on hand are nettle, again, because it's how high in calcium and iron that it is. Um, and it's got loads of chlorophyll in it as well. Red clover is brilliant for so many womb health challenges and perimenopause and menopause. And maca is really brilliant at stabilizing our hormonal levels as well. But I know this is doing a whole Whole course on herbal medicine. So I'm sure she'll speak a lot more about that. Three habits. And just quickly before we wrap up, three habits that can 
destroy your health is sitting. And they say sitting is the new smoking. So I've bunched those two together. We do want to make sure that we are moving as much as possible. I fully understand lockdown happened. The Corona coaster happened. Um, we found ourselves working from home. We were sitting down to work from home. We weren't even getting up to travel, getting into our car and driving around as much. And we've a lot of us have kind of ended up in that same pattern, but we do want to make sure you're finding time to get up and move around because sitting is definitely the new smoking. It creates a lot. It creates poor circulation, um, which means the toxins aren't getting moved around our body. It creates stagnation. And all of the when sisters are sitting down, all of that culmination of blood, the blood just kind of pulls right where our uterus is. And that is why we have so many challenges. And that's also why when sisters do start exercising more, it can definitely help to reduce a lot of the womb health challenges that they're facing. The other thing that sisters need to, we really need to look at is toxic personal care products. Again, please go back and listen to um, the hidden science of black hair because all the speakers spoke about the toxins that are in black women's hair products. They've just started saying on the news that 80% of black women's hair products have got carcinogenic compounds in it. But even before then, I remember one of the first articles that I read, and this was like 20 years ago, when I got into health, was 30 ways to poison yourself before breakfast. And it listed the 30 chemicals that we take in from our mouthwash to our toothpaste, brothers with aftershave, sisters with um, perfume, the deodorants that we use, and the antiperspirants, more importantly. And for sisters, antiperspirants are really important. You want to move away from them, and you want to move to um, natural deodorants, because antiperspirants are the underarm um, things that you use that stop perspiration. That's why they're called antiperspirants. So they're blocking the, the, um, the ducts underneath your armpits. So toxins have an opportunity to accumulate there. And that is right next to our breast tissue. And so there's definitely, again, been a link. And a lot of celebrities even started talking about the fact that sisters, we want to, sisters, Again, when we do get breast cancer, it's more likely to be life-threatening for us. We want to reduce the amount of toxins that are accumulating in our breast tissue area. Because again, when a lot of sisters get their breast um, cancer tumors removed, they go up and they take the lymph nodes from underneath the arm as well. And sometimes that's where the toxicity starts. That's sometimes where the tumors actually start. The other thing sisters can definitely do is not wear bras as much as, you know, as much as we do. Some women are wearing bras 24 hours. I'm used to, I used to wear my bra 24 hours a day, um, but making sure we're not wearing bras as much as we possibly can. When you get home, take it off, sis. <laughs> just whip it off. Some of us do that for comfort anyway, but that restriction around the, just underneath our breast tissue, again, it allows uh, toxins to accumulate in that area. Definitely removing all the underwire from your bras. Um, there's a lot more bras now that have, that are designed in a way that does give us support without needing the underwire there because I'm not as well endowed as some other sisters and some other sisters, when I've said that to them, they're like, sis, you want me to not wear a bra with these? I'm like, yo, <laughs> trying to look out for your health there says you might want to wrap them up with some material or but again there are some really decent bras now for sisters that have got like double d cups f cups all of those cups still good support but there's not so much of a pressure around that area the other thing that destroys sisters health is holding things in and not talking about them because again there's that that's that thing that people will throw out to black women on a talk too much. Yeah, but some of us aren't talking enough and some of us are going through high levels of trauma, whether it's that we're worried about our young men on the streets, or we're worried about our young girls being sexualized or we're suffering toxicity from the white supremacist environment that we're oppressed under. And we're not talking about it enough because we feel like we're going to be seen as the angry black woman if we really start talking about how we feel. And we need to stop doing that. We need to find people, find spaces, find a journal where we can release all of the challenges and the, the feelings that we're feeling that can manifest themselves into physical ailments. Because again, a lot of sisters I work with have got womb health challenges. And it's been found that sisters, we hold a lot of our emotions in our womb space. So there's a definite correlation there. We need to release the things that are uh, held, hurting and harming us mentally and emotionally without the fear of being judged by ignorant people um, so that we can start the process of healing.
And now seven, three habits quickly that can restore our health is again, getting out of breath and sweating three times a week. Again, when I spoke about fasting, you want to do fasting, which is where you abstain from any kind of foods at all. And you just stick to water liquid feasting, which is where you have nourishing liquids. Um, and doing that three times a year, I'd recommend is brilliant. Um, and also things that help your mental and emotional. So things like mindful meditation, periodic social media or media in general detoxing and giving yourself space as well so as far as like liquid feasting is concerned um on tuesday i just finished a 12-day liquid cleanse where i was just having uh, juices and smoothies and fish head soup fish broth and herbal teas and that's something that i aim to do maybe two or three times a year. Um, this time I did it for 12 days. I am aiming to do like a 40 day one at some point as well. Um, and again, I'm sure that's something that um, Leon has spoken about fasting. And I'm sure at some point, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, um, Leon will do a group one for us all to participate in as well. And one of my sayings, one of my favorite sayings is that maintaining your health is easier than regaining or trying to repair your health. You can find out more about the work that I do at the naturallyyoucoach.com. Um, and again, you can also find out about the live blood analysis that I do at the naturallyyouclinic.com. And that's in my clinic in Birmingham. Um, thank you for listening. And we can now go to questions. So I will stop sharing my screen. Family, listen. Wow. How amazing was that? Family, show your appreciation for the Naturally You coach, Leah Salmon. Put some ones in the chat. We will be doing a live Q&A now. So I saw there was quite a few questions in the chat. Uh, it's going to be hard for us to scroll up and get those questions. So you can either repost the question oh. in the chat or if you can raise your hand, we'll come to you live. So I see a couple quest uh, I see a couple hands raised. So let me see if I can get through these quickly. All right. Jamina, your hand was raised. So if you can unmute your mic, you can ask your question. And I'm going to try and unmute. I'm going to try and get to a couple of you because a couple of you got your hands raised. Liana, if you can, whoever unmutes their mic first. Victoria, if you can try to unmute your mic. Who else is there? It's quite a few. Large up all the people putting their appreciation for. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Di. Is it Diana? One of one of you should be able to find your mic. <laughs> Un unmute. All right. Let me see if Kemi. Kemi, if you can unmute your mic, you can ask your question. Oh hi! I've just put it in the chat. Can you hear me? Hey. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Thanks very much. Really appreciated that. It was really great. I just wanted to ask about the nettle, red clover and maca. That's yep. the first question. But did you say they were herbs or teas or both? Yep. So um, red clover and nettle are both teas. You can buy nettle tea in in most supermarkets, in fact. And I'd recommend you have about three cups of that a day. Like when I was pregnant, I read that um, nettle tea, having three cups of nettle tea gives a pregnant woman all the calcium that she needs. So when they're talking about black women having to have milk, cow's milk to make sure your baby has enough um, calcium and you have enough calcium, nettle tea can definitely do that. Red clover is also a tea that you can buy um, in loose herbs or you can buy it in tea bags. But maca is actually the root of a Peruvian, it was a Peruvian root that they ground down into a powder. So you buy it in this kind of like light brown um, powder and you can, it tastes kind of like um, butterscotch. You can put it in things like smoothies. You can sprinkle it over fruits. Um, some people put it in cakes. Some people make a frosting out of it. Um, and that's really good at balancing hormones. In fact, even for brothers, like if brothers have challenges with um, performance, you know what I'm talking about? then that actually helps their performance as well. Um, when sisters have got heavy, long and painful periods, especially the painful periods, the maca is really good at um, dealing with that. Maca is what we call in the herbal world an adaptogen. So it helps your body to adapt to the hormonal changes that can happen. Um, and that's something that you can have like on a daily basis as well. Jen, thank you very much. Where is the best place to get, because it's, 
it's I always wonder where is the best place to get this these things so that I'm getting most of the tea or the you know that I'm getting the nettle most yeah. of it rather than any chemicals added so nettle is actually quite reliable um because mo- because nettle grows so abundantly as long as you're getting an organic one it is quite um reliable um so you can get that one the organic one from um from most supermarkets sainsbury's and and tesco's and those kind of things with red clover and maca there's a company called buy whole foods online um and that's where i get them from you can get really good quality um a lot of whole foods you can get the really good quality ones from there so buy whole foods online clipper yeah it's, cl- it's the clippers thank you to hey malua clark greetings sis um yeah i get clippers nettle tea as well the only thing when it comes to tea in tea bags you want to definitely aim to make sure you're buying the tea bags that don't have plastic in them and because that's become a new phenomenon now people now realize that a lot of tea bags are made with plastic um the companies that have pure tea bags that are just made of paper um, we'll put that on the box. That's that's really the most important thing. And tea bags are really beneficial. But if you don't mind brewing up loose herbs, then getting loose herbs of these things is really good. There's a sister called Avon Herbs in Birmingham that sells loose herbs. And she, you can go in there and tell her what you want and she can put combinations together for you. If you're in London, I think it's Elephant and Castle. There's a company called Baldwin's that sells loose herbs. And then if you're in Brixton, you can definitely go to Natir Vital. Um, near Brixton Rec, underneath the arches, they have herbs in there. And if you're in Northwest London, definitely checking out Sister Ivy's shop, um, Unk Wellbeing for all the herbs. She's got loose herbs and she's got tea bags in there as well. Thank you, sis. Thanks for that. Uh, Diana, I can see that you've unmuted your mic so you can ask your question, sis. Diana? Oh, okay. Let me see if uh, Linda, can you unmute your mic, sis? Linda? Are people having issues with their mic? Can we manually unmute people? Uh, Well, Linda's mic is unmuted. Oh, same. Linda? No? All right, let's try Liana. Liana or who else is there? There's quite a few here. Karina. Karina, if you can unmute your mic, sis. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, So mine was more like, I just, I missed one of your slides. Oh, sorry. Um, It was... It was slide number three, the movement one. Is could you possibly pop it up again, please? Yeah, sure. That was literally it. Um, other than that, amazing. Love this. Thank, Thank you, darling. You so much. You're Thank welcome. you. There you go, sis. Thank you, sis. Thank you. You're welcome, Bob. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So much information in that, sis. And I, I, I think I saw someone ask about another slide. Oh, sure. Let's do the slides. Uh, I don't know. Um, the person who ask about another slide if you can just retype your question with regards to another slide let's see if we can get Sharon while we're waiting for someone else to come on this movement thing is really beneficial for children as well because again children are stuck behind screens all the time so one thing you can get your children to do is earn their screen time by if they want to spend 10 minutes in front of the screen they have to go and do 10 minutes of running around or jumping up and down or gymnastics or dance or karate or something so they they match the amount of time they spend on a screen with the amount of time they are exercising and moving around as well Okay, let's see if we can get Heather. Heather, are you there? Hi, Liam. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sis. can hear you, sis. Hello. Evening. Thank you again for another fire presentation, both of you. Excellent. Thanks. Leah, um, I I saw you a few months back, and I've been doing my probiotics and and doing all the things and feeling good for it. With the chia seeds, I normally put those in a smoothie every morning. And mm. I would normally soak, put some in the fridge, soak them with water so it comes out like a gel. Yep. When I spoke to my reflexologist, she was saying, you need to grind them up because if you grind them up, if you don't grind them up, it goes straight through you. 
Do I need to grind up the chia seeds or can I just soak them in water and then dash them in the smoothie? So the process of blending them in the smoothie is going to do the same process as grinding them up. If you are chewing your, if you make like a chia pudding, for example, where you get the soaked chia seeds and you mix it with like coconut milk or you mix it with like a fruit smoothie, then this is where chewing our food comes into place. Because if you think about it, like um, our ancestors didn't have, you know, food processes and things like that, but they did chew their food 30 times and they chewed it until 30 to 70 times, in fact, and they chewed it until it was liquid because, you know, we have these fun, you know, fancy tools and things like that, but we also have our teeth. And the more we use our teeth, it actually strengthens your teeth. The, when you're eating healthy food and you allow those foods time to stay in your mouth, your teeth actually absorb the nutrients from your food. So if, as long as you're not using a toothpaste that's got too much glycerin in it, because the glycerin blocks the natural pores in your teeth, but your teeth actually are part of the process of digesting your food because they absorb the nutrients, especially the minerals, um, from your food when you're chewing your food down properly. So if you are going to have your chia seeds dry, then yeah, you might want to grind them up to get a better chance of them going in. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen people's blood look better. I've seen their, their, um, their healthy, uh, fat levels increase when they've been using soaked chia seeds, the way that I've spoken about it. Brilliant. Thank you. You're very welcome, sis. Thank you, sis. All right, there are some others, and I'm going to get to, let's see, Sandra, I'm going to get to you if you still want to ask your question. Vanessa, and who else is there? And Norel, if you still want to ask your question, I'm going to get to you. So I'm going to allow you to unmute your mic, but just stay there for one second, because I saw some good questions in the Q&A. Wow, there's quite a few in the Q&A. Um, all right, quick fire sis so yep. what's the cause of migraine headaches oh unfortunately there's a lot because it can be hormonal imbalance it can be deficiencies um it can be dehydration um sisters will get it when they have um pmt as well because of the again because of the hormone balance so there's a lot of actual reasons for it if it is debilitating i would recommend you um, go to the gp and get yourself tested but the other thing that you can do for migraines is go and see a very good acupuncturist okay uh, can you say the turmeric chocolate milk black pepper recipe suggestion again, please? Yeah, definitely. So coconut milk, banana or plantain, sea moss gel, soaked chia seeds with chocolate powder, like a pure chocolate powder, turmeric, a tiny pinch of black pepper um, and mixed spice. And then you can put honey in there or soak dates to sweeten that up. All right, this one, um, she might need to come see, but... Um, this next question says, I'm just about to menopause. My body and mind are just in turmoil. And I'm wondering if there's any herbs you may suggest to balance or regulate my issues. Yeah, so you can start with, there's a product I have on my site called Wound Balance, which is a combination of Agnes Castus, yarrow and nettle. And that's very good uh, one-stop initial thing that you can take. There's also a prebiotic called bio live women um, that's got a combination of herbs that can balance out the hormones that can make you feel like you're going through turmoil but again supplements are one part of it but definitely looking at your life and and uh, your lifestyle and your diet as well because if you're eating a lot of dairy you're going to be taking in excessive hormones that are going to play even more hag favoc with the hormonal changes that you're going through now if you're not getting enough exercise if you're not sweating um, all of those things can create challenges um, when you're going through that transition so um, yeah those are the initial recommendations that I can give and Faye in, in the chat she asked um, if we live in highly air polluted areas would you still recommend deep breathing yeah in your house in a gym by an air purifier um, and yeah don't not not outside on the high street not like in the middle of Harlesden high street or outside brixton tube station maybe not there but somewhere where you can because there's always a park get into the middle of whatever park you can sit on the floor so you're nearer to the grass because again all the green trees around us help to detoxify the air to some degree um, and then having things in your house that detoxify the air so there's always a way that you'll be able to achieve it even in a very toxic area all right there's quite a few uh 
family, if you want to ask a question, you're going to have to raise your hand because there's, there's too many questions in the Q&A to get through. So let's see if Angela. Hey, Sharon. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, Sharon, are you there? Okay, yeah. sorry, Sharon. I, my mic has finally showed up. I couldn't find it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. That was so inspiring. Um, so sweet and everything. But I just wanted to ask, because I just gone through like a, one of those um, scans and, you know, like the doctor kind of saw certain things. And one of the things that he, he recommend is, I think you said skipping. Um, would you say that, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, trampolining, like what rebounding is a good one as yeah, well? Yeah, skipping, rebounding, bodyweight exercises. Because the thing is, children do this all the Children will jump off things, jump off sofas, jump off chairs, and their bodies, boom, hit in the ground. And every time they do that, it's strengthening their muscles, it's strengthening their joints. And us, if we fall over once, Whatever we were doing that made us fall over, we will <laughs> never do that again. It just hurts so much. Yeah. But we need to get back into the, the habit of doing things where we're getting knocked about a bit because it keeps us strong and it keeps our bones and muscles strong. So skipping, as long as you're wearing good shoes, um, skipping is really good. Um, rebounding is something you can do at home. And again, it's, it's getting that circulation going. Um, body weight exercises. You don't want to do anything if you know you've got injuries and you're going to hurt yourself and definitely get onto the pain course um, that, that Leon was talking about. If you do have muscular injuries, if you have specific things, aim to go and see an osteopath and those kind of things. But yeah, skipping, I think is excellent. Absolutely excellent. And you know that smoothie that you said just now, please can you do it one more time? It's yes, darling. So coconut milk, soaked chia seeds, sea moss, turmeric, black pepper, mixed spice, honey or soaked dates to sweeten it, and plantain or banana to make it nice and thick and creamy. Thank you. You're welcome, darling. All right. Vanessa, are you there? Yes. Hello. Hey, greetings. Uh, good. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great presentation and um, talk. You, I really sis. appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to query about IBS. So yes. I was told that I have IBS a couple of years ago, um, went through the FODMAP diet where food mm. was restricted, reintroduced those foods, found a massive difference when I was restricting certain foods. Mm -hmm. And that was about two to three years ago. And I guess my concern is now is about how I live life as such. Yeah. In the sense of I've reintroduced certain foods. I have to a point where I can have only like a quarter onion Mm, one mm, peg mm. of garlic a very specific way yeah. of eating and I just wonder if you have any suggestions about things to reduce flare-ups or yeah. or any suggestions on it so what I would definitely recommend is something that our parents used to have all the time which is fish head soup okay. or some kind of a broth that will heal and seal your gut because the good thing about the FODMAP diet it does take away you know the fructo oleo saccharides and the things that can create inflammation but when it comes to even things like detoxing and and um, parasite cleansing because parasites can actually be a really big contributing factor to IBS as well it's what can actually trigger the fluctuation between the constipation and the diarrhea um, but the first thing you want to do is to kill off any bacteria and parasites that are there by taking kind of antiparasitics and then you want to reintroduce a whole level of friendly bacteria because again IBS can be contributed to by that dysbiosis by not having enough friendly bacteria in your gut and it allows the unfriendly bacteria to cause havoc and cause inflammation. Because even though they recognize there's irritable bowel syndrome, so there's inflammation, they don't always tell you what's causing that inflammation. And sometimes that inflammation is caused by um, parasitic overgrowth or bacteria that could be in your body. So um, healing and sealing your gut is the next. So yeah, you wanna kill off any bacteria and parasites that are there, stop feeding them by not giving them those those simple um, foods and those inflammatory foods. Healing and sealing the gut is repairing the damage that would have been done to the gut um, because IBS definitely goes hand in hand with things like leaky gut syndrome. Um, so you want to heal and seal the gut and that bit doesn't always happen. And you also want to re-inoculate the gut by again, making sure you put in enough friendly bacteria 
over a long period of time. So if you haven't already started adding some friendly bacteria to your diet and adding something like either glutamine powder is, I think I've got some on my site at the moment because glutamine is the amino acid that most of your digestive tract is made of. And if you've been through IBS and you've, you may have had um, symptoms of leaky gut as well, we need to rebuild that gut. So glutamine powder and um, the reason I recommend bone broth, fish head soup specifically, so not chicken or any meat, just fish head soup, um, is because it gives you very absorbable levels of that um, protein, that glutamine to rebuild your gut. So when you are in that place where your gut is getting stronger and stronger and it's re-inoculated, you'll slowly be able to introduce more foods because the last thing I would want to do is ask you to remove anything more than you probably already have had to. So you definitely want to still remove things like dairy and wheat and yeah. processed sugar, but yeah. you want to strengthen your gut and add as many more food. The other thing that's brilliant is sauerkraut. So making your own sauerkraut because that has a level of glutamine in it as well. And it's got the probiotic and the prebiotic. So that's literally just grated cabbage, red cabbage or white cabbage, grate it down, sprinkle loads of salt on it, get something to mash it all down with. And as you're mashing it, the water comes out of the cabbage and it mixes with the salt to create a brine. And then you leave that in a glass jar and you keep that on the counter for a few days and let it ferment and then put it in the fridge. And you've got your own raw sauerkraut and you put a tablespoon of that onto your plate every time you're eating and you're getting the glutamine that's healing and sealing and repairing the gut um, in that way as well. And there's lots of videos on, on how to make sauerkraut and kimchi is another version of it um, as well. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome darling, take care. Thank you sis. All right, we're gonna go through, we're gonna try and go through as many as possible because there's so many, but there are some good ones in here that I just want um, Leah to touch on. So you mentioned about the healthy bacteria. So someone asked any recommendations on probiotics. Do you have one on your site, sis? Yeah, so there's a liquid probiotic that I've got called Naked Biotics. There's, and that's for general use. There's one specifically for sisters called Bio Live Women. And those, if you've got digestive challenges, taking liquids is easier to absorb than, sub, than capsules. I also sell a product called OptiBac. Um, I'm not sure if it's on my site, but if you want to buy that, you can just send me an email at leah at the naturallyyoucoach.com and I can send you a payment link to that. And you can also find those on other places. So OptiBac, um, Naked Biotics and Bio Live Women. Those are the ones I recommend. Uh, someone asked, please, can you put up the last free sl last slide on free habits that can restore your health? I sure can. And whilst you're doing that, yep. someone's asking, best foods to eat during, is that perimenopause or premenopause? Perimenopause or premenopause? Probably perimenopause. Peri. Perimenopause. Okay, best foods to eat during perimenopause. Yep. So during perimenopause, you want to get in as many minerals as possible during this time, because again, your estrogen levels are going to be dropping. So you want to, and the estrogen helps your body to hold onto your minerals better. So you want to be eating lots of dark green leafy vegetables. Again, the nettle tea. Um, if you eat fish, if you eat good quality, organic free range eggs, then those two things, definitely you want to get in nut and seed milks. Almond milk is like almond milk that you make yourself, raw nuts, raw almonds, those kind of things. Almond is really a nutritious um, nutrient. Definitely getting in the chia seeds as well. You want to get the raw foods in there so your body can assimilate all of those nutrients out. Um, you want to get the vitamin K in there again from the kale. And you can add these raw foods to smoothies and things like that as well. You also want to stimulate and keep your digestive juices flowing. So again, papaya seeds and pineapple and celery, all of those things are um, very beneficial to have. You want to make sure your water is optimized and you want to get apples into your diet as well to help cleanse the liver and keep it in a good functioning order so that when you start going through more of the um, more the more in-depth, the more intense um, hormone changes, your liver is supported. So the skin of the apples has that malic acid in it and malic acid helps your liver to detoxify itself. So you can drink fresh pressed or um, apple juice that you juice yourself or just eating a couple of apples a day is also very um, beneficial. Sandra, did you have a question, sis? Yes, I have. Can you hear me? Greetings. Greetings. Greetings, greetings, uh, Leon. Um, hi, Leah. Hi. Um, 
It's Sandy here from Teen Girls oh, Networking. Greetings, sis. Nice to hear from greetings, you. Greetings, yeah. And you, and you. Uh, yeah, my question is, um, because I have um, high blood pressure, Yes. Um, I don't take meds. I uh, try to control it naturally, and I have a high blood pressure, uh, blood pressure uh, monitor as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you mentioned about the clean water and putting salt in. Yeah. Uh, and I, I try to avoid salt because of the blood pressure problem. Oh, yeah. Um, would you still recommend putting salt in the water or shall I just yeah. stick to having the lemon? So lemon or is good. Lemon, lemon would anyway. be sufficient. Yeah. So lemon would or lime is sufficient. But what I will say with salt, and I think someone put it in the chat and thank you for, for bringing that up. When I'm talking about salt, I'm talking about good quality, pink Himalayan salt, black salt, oh, gray hmm. salt, Celtic salt, Seltra salt. Um, and absolutely not table salt because there's actually a doctor in America who treats, who was treating some of his heart um, patients, patients that had cardiovascular disease and high blood pressure by giving them the mineral rich salt in, uh -huh. you know, specific amounts. And that was actually helping them to reduce their blood pressure. So absolutely. If you're cautious of any type of salt and the thing is with salt, salt can be addictive. Salt can be as addictive as, um, sweet things and fatty things. So if you've moved away from the need to have salty tasting things, then you uh -huh. can just stick to the lime. But if you don't have that as a challenge, then yeah, tiny amount, just little sprinkles of a good quality um, pink or black or brown or gray Keltra or sea salts or Himalayan salts um, should be absolutely fine. Awesome, yeah, that's great. Thank you very Thank much you. for that. I needed Thank that. You, Thank you, take, take care. care. Thank you, sis. And someone asks, how do I soak and use the chia seeds? Absolutely. So what I'd recommend is that if you got a glass jar, I'd recommend you use a glass jar. If you pour the chia seeds in and they end up being at that level, just use your fingers to measure three times going up. So you pour in three to four times the amount of water as you have chia seeds and then you stir that around and keep stirring it and it will create this thick gel and then you just keep that in a jar in the fridge and that's your soaked chia seeds and it will stay like that um, you just put a lid on it and it'll stay fine in your fridge for about two weeks and then on a daily basis you can take two tablespoons out you can blend it into your smoothies if you don't have smoothies you can mix it with um like yogurt, if you get like coconut yogurt, not soya yogurt, not dairy yogurt, but like coconut yogurt, they've got nut yogurts now. You can mix it with fruit purees um, and you can kind of, or you can make a pudding from it. Some people put like chocolate powder in it and honey. Um, I have a recipe for a vanilla, vanilla um, chia pudding where I mix it with coconut milk and vanilla. I scrape the, the actual vanilla bean paste out and soak dates and make that into like a pudding. You can put it on top of or stir it into your porridge. If you have overnight oats or, you know, even like cornmeal porridge, um, you can stir it into your porridges and you can do it like that. I know some people that actually um, use it when they're making bread as well. They use it as a binder, like a replacement for eggs in um, certain kind of baked foods like that as well. So if you do a search for uh, chia seed recipes, there's quite a few that will come up. All right, thank you for that, sis. Yep. Norel, if you can unmute your mic, then you can ask your question. If not, let me see if I can get last two. Uh, what tips can you give me as I'm extremely anemic at the moment? I'm experiencing lightheadedness and dizziness. Oh, bless. Okay, so liquid iron supplements are definitely something that I'd recommend you get in. So again, when it comes to taking in iron, you want to take in an iron that's as easy to absorb as possible. So something like Spartone, um, which is a sachets of iron water that comes from an iron rich spring in the UK. And you can buy the Spartone that comes with um, vitamin C in it as well, because your body needs vitamin C to be able to absorb iron. Floridex is another really good um, supplement. But when it comes to iron, you don't want to just take a supplement. Some people just take a supplement and wonder why things aren't working. So you want to get the iron in, but you also want to avoid foods that block iron absorption. So foods that block iron absorption are things like dairy and excess sugar. So you want to remove dairy and excess sugar. You want to add that iron. You want to add the vitamin C. So again, back home, we would have things like molasses, 
a spoonful or two tablespoons of molasses in hot water and we'd squeeze lime juice into it. So we got the iron and the minerals from the molasses and we get the vitamin C from the lime. And that would be a daily tonic that you would have. Um, and then you also wanna make sure you're well hydrated to get all the nutrients from your food to actually be delivered to your body anyway. If you go to my website, thenaturallyyoucoach.com, and then you go to the podcast or the Naturally You radio, I actually have a whole um, podcast that I did on how to boost your iron levels, even when you're pregnant. Because when I was eight months pregnant with our last daughter, the hospital said they wouldn't give me a home birth because my iron was too low. I said, give me two weeks. I went back in two weeks and my iron levels had shot up. And in that podcast, I tell you everything that I did to raise my iron levels, even when I was eight months pregnant. Wow. How beneficial is this information, Big Family? Norel, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Greetings. Yes. Greetings. I want some information on foods for hot flushes. So they come Ooh. and they go, obviously. But yeah, I've tried loads of different combinations of things and I haven't been taking any medication for it. So I just yeah. wanted to know what foods and things I could use. What have you tried already, sis? Have you tried sage? No, I haven't. Right. So sage tea is one of the best um, herbs when it comes to hot flushes for sisters, as well as making sure you're well enough hydrated and exercising, because I know it might sound like a bit of a contradiction, but getting out of breath and sweating on a regular basis. Ah, there you go. Margaret Eubanks said that sage works. Um, so we've had confirmation in the chat. But yeah, when you're exercising and getting out of breath, it actually helps your body to regulate itself. And again, going back to the liver, your liver actually is the organ responsible for heat regulation. So when when we have uh, conditions where there's a lot of heat involved, again, it's an indication that the liver needs to be looked at. So I, there's a herbal supplement that I have. I think I have it on my site. I recommend it to clients called Cytoprotect Liver. You can also take milk thistle herb, which is brilliant at detoxifying and supporting the, the function of the liver, as well as dandelion, a combination of dandelion and nettle. Um, and then sage tea. You can literally get the sage from the um, supermarket, dry sage or fresh sage, make a tea out of it a teaspoon of the dry herb in hot water let it steep for five minutes drain it off drink that on a once or twice a day and do it for about nine days give yourself a few days off and then start again doing a combination of all of those things you should definitely see a reduction and also adding raw foods to your meals each meal having something cool and raw that will also help to stabilize the the, the heat in your body generally thank you you're welcome. Thank you very much. You, sis. You're welcome. All right, family, we're going to stop it there. There's still hands, but I'm just going to lower everyone's hands. Sorry, family. Now, oh, uh, what's that doing there? Oh, there you go. Yeah, so family, that was true. Can we all just show our appreciation for Leah one more time? Uh -huh. Because that was over and above what I'm sure all of, I, all of us expected, including myself. That was so oh, much thank information. You. Thank you very much. And uh leah Simon, leah if you could put your um website in the chat because sure. people keep on asking about that so everyone on this right now if you appreciate that go and you know check out leah's website buy some of the products read some of the blogs and that sort of stuff this is important information and i did see someone in the chat say this was amazing but now we need a men's one yeah i do agree i do agree but i do i believe that the information that leah shared tonight can be used for men and women. It actually could be used for men and women. Replace what Leah said with regards to um, women and bras and you know <laughs> that part of your area and replace that with guys downstairs. Yes. You need, that needs to move. Yeah. You know I mean? So if you're sitting down all day on that, that's, that's just as dangerous as women wearing bras all day and that sort of stuff. So yep. yeah. We need to be very um, aware of, we need to move as well, guys. Yeah, so women have hormones, men have hormones as well. So we need to move as well. Down there needs to move. Down there needs to be free. So if you're sitting down all day and things ain't moving, that's not good for your hormones. That's not good for your testosterone levels and that sort of stuff. Yeah, loose boxes. That's yeah, what man. I'm talking about. Yeah. I remember the first time I mentioned that, I think it was one of my previous lectures Earlier this year, it might have been my sexual health one or some, or one of them ones. And oh. someone was saying that they were telling their son um, 
to wear brief or something. And the son was like, nah, man, I want boxers. And she now she's like, okay, now I understand why he wants boxers. Yeah. Because, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the same thing with the bras. Yeah. Though every every part of your body needs to move. Yeah. yeah. That's what keeps it healthy. But Even um, is, Jeremy is there actually you want to share before we finish? Yeah, just quickly. Jeremy, um, my husband Jeremy, Jeremy Salmon, one of the projects he's actually working on is a range of boxer shorts specifically designed for brothers and the brand is called four brothers so if you go on instagram you'll see and look for four brothers that's a project that he's working on um because we all know and and my husband has fathered seven children family so <laughs> and he has never worn no tie top tie top skin up <laughs> bad man <laughs> the dress like <laughs> wow wow With tie top so tie tops. Family, so. go check that out family yeah 